I'll never forget getting my papers and being handed the severance pay and going to the train immediately and going to New York City, which I did. And I got myself a hotel room and told the Morris office that I was back. And they said, uh, Richard Kohlmeyer is casting a new Broadway musical called Windy City. Richard Kohlmeyer was an actor himself, but he had ambition of being a producer. And this was going to be his first production. He was married to a very influential lady named Dorothy Kilgallen, who was a leading columnist for uh, Hearst. Hearst, right, in New York. So I reported to the theater with my music. I read several sides of the uh, role. And I sang a couple of songs. And these fellows were all sitting in the audience. And after I finished my second song, they said, that's it. You're it. We want you. And we hope you want us. Well, here I am just out of the Army. And I would have taken anything. But here I am with a leading role in a big Broadway musical, Windy City. We went into rehearsal and opened in uh, New Haven played the half a week there, then went to Boston. They were starting having a few problems with the storyline and the script. And from Boston, after three weeks there, we went to Philadelphia, where we played another three weeks. And then Colmar said, he made an announcement to the company, we're going to have to close down for about two weeks to give us a chance to do the final touching up of the show, and then we're going to open in Chicago. So that's where we went from all of these places to Chicago, where we opened with a lot of revisions to the story, and they weren't strong enough to sustain it for a Broadway opening. He backed off, so the show closed in Chicago. Now, while I was performing in Chicago, unbeknownst to me, a fellow named Richard Rogers had come to see the show. He was in Chicago in between trains or something. And when the show closed and I went back to New York, he called my agents and he said, I'd like to talk to John. So I went over to meet with Mr. Rogers of Rogers and Hammerstein, of course. And he said, now Oscar and I are working on a very important musical we're calling it Allegro. And we're not ready for it yet, but we want you for one of the principal roles. Are you interested? I said, I am interested. So he said, all right, I want you to do us a favor. Until we're ready to start rehearsals, we'd like you to go into our production of Carousel, which was playing on Broadway. And already a hit? Tremendous hit. It was in its third year. So I said, well, I'd love to do that. So they gave me the role to study. It was for the bad guy. His name was Jigger Cragen. And he is the guy who gets the leading man into trouble and the leading man commits suicide on stage. Jigger Cragen was my debut on Broadway. And I played it for the rest of its Broadway run, which was the final year. When we closed in New York, Dick Rogers said, we're still not ready, John. We want you to go to Chicago with the company because we're going to play eight weeks there and then close it down. So I went to Chicago and played the final eight weeks there, closed it down. And they notified me then that I could have a six-week vacation and then report back to New York and get ready for rehearsals. So I came home to visit with my mother and dad for those six weeks, and all the time knowing that I was going to be in a Rodgers and Hammerstein production, which was the ultimate for aspiring and established Broadway actors of that time. So I had a wonderful visit at home, then went back and went right to work in Allegro. 
Please give us your impressions of Rogers and Hammerstein. The uh, two Rogers and Hammerstein were two very prolific writers, composers, as you know. Uh, Dick Rogers was the man who wanted the edge over Oscar. Friendly rivalry, and you know they were great partners, but he wanted the edge over him, and he would he would examine with care every write-up, and he'd get very upset if they paid more attention to Oscar than they did to him. But Oscar was a gentle, gentle man, and he had no hang-ups. And uh, the, uh, the differences between them were never such to cause any rupture in their collaboration. But my favorite was Oscar. I'll never forget one night he had come back. He had watched the performance after we'd been open about two weeks. And I had a very quick change in one scene. I come into our dorm room where my roommate is studying at his desk. And I'm the playboy. You know, I come home. I want to change my shirt and tie and go on and pick up my date. I have to do it very, very quickly. It's almost choreographed movements. <coughs> so when I'm bare chested, I didn't wear an undershirt. I take off my coat, rip off my shirt, tie. And while I'm standing there, we have to be playing to the audience as though it were a fourth wall. And I do a kind of a, an unconscious gesture of scratching my tummy here. And then the action carries me on. I put on my shirt, my tie, and say so long to my roommate, and out I go. Well, Oscar came backstage after that performance, and he said, John, I don't think that looks good for you to do that. I don't want you to scratch yourself. I said, well, OK. I wasn't even aware I was doing it. It felt like something natural to do, so I was doing it. So I took the piece of business out. And I reflected back afterwards. Shortly after Allegro closed, a streetcar named Desire opened with Marlon Brando coming on with torn T-shirts and that marvelous performance he did. And he was scratching himself all over the place. I thought, maybe if I'd scratched more, 